Well, yeah, I'm Connor Baxter from Maui, Hawaii, and uh, been in the water since a baby. I mean, grew up on Maui, we're surrounded by water, so, I mean, there's things to do, but it's not like the mainland where you have Disneyland, Disney World, you know, all these uh, attractions where a lot of us uh, just decided to have fun in the ocean, and ever since a kid, that, that's been my dream. I mean, always have fun and try to let other people enjoy what I do as well. I mean, I windsurf, toe surf, surf, <laughs> stand up paddle, and uh, anything else kind of in the water. I mean, I've tried kiting before a few times, and it just gives me more water time. I mean, when it's windy, can't surf, can't do a lot of things, that, but you can go windsurfing, you can do a downwinder, you can, you know, so it's just, those kind of things allow me to get in the water as much as I can, which is, uh, like I said, more water time, which is always the best feeling. Favorite of my water sports, that's a, that's a hard choice. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I mean, all the conditions are so different, so if there's no wind, I mean, you can't wind surf, so then again, you can surf and do all these other things. So it's kind of just, I guess, depends on the day and the conditions, obviously, like whatever it's good for that day. But otherwise, I love all of them just as equal and uh, enjoy them a lot. Yeah, windsurfing just opened up a whole world of opportunities for me. It was like crazy. And right away, Starboard, you know, I've been with the Starboard family for 10 years now. And it's just been so great, you know, just looking back on all the great years Connor Baxter and I have had. And our beginning days, windsurfing, traveling around the world, and now stand-up paddling. It's really just amazing. It's really really cool almost choking up thinking about it because we've had so much great times and experiences just all over the world and it's uh, really cool and yeah so windsurfing and starboard they just opened up this world for me and started sending me boards and I kind of felt like a you know a professional surfer you know I was out there just getting boards and riding and traveling the world doing contests and, and so uh, yeah and then Stand-up paddling came around. It was like um, probably about six years ago now when I first started. When Sven first came up to Connor and I and said, "Hey, we got these new boards. You guys want to try them?" And so Connor and I went out. I think it was at Lanio Poco. Even I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it was yeah, Lanio Poco, and right where I live. And we tried it, and it was a lot of fun. You know, it was like longboarding, but you never have to stand up. Just always. Up, have a higher vantage point over the water and standing upright, getting into waves quick, and you know, it was a lot of fun and kind of felt like it was a, a unique sport because you could walk around the board like you're longboarding and you could still have a good time being mellow even if there's no waves, you know. So I kind of fell in love with stand up paddling from the get go as a surfer and as a windsurfer. And, well, I, I, can, I can never pick like a favorite, you know. I, the only way I could pick what I want to do is what nature is providing for me, you know. It's like, if it's good windsurfing conditions, I'll go out there and have fun windsurfing, doing flips, and if it's a good day for surfing, glassy and barreling, you know, I can never beat a barrel. I mean, a good day surfing is better than any other. And then stand-up paddling, it's just, you know, I could pretty much have fun any day on a stand-up board, whether it's small, big, or flat completely, or even just to do a fun adventure, you know, just with some friends paddling around the corner, looking at turtles and whales, and it's, uh, you know, it's really a unique thing because you don't really need anything, you know, you could just paddle around any body of water and enjoy your time.
Yeah, that's what I, I love about Starboard. I mean, they're really, they're making all the boards with the option of the stand up or windsurfing inserts and foot straps and stuff. I mean, which is a really cool option. I mean, when it's light wind, when it's just that hair too windy to surf or stand up, that makes it kind of not fun, but just enough to go out on my 7-Eleven or my 8-0 stand up board, it's, it's a ball. I mean, you have this big board, you can just go up, hang five, hang 10, come back, do a nice like off the lips. So I mean, it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do and uh, I really enjoy it on the stand up board for sure. I've had a lot of people who like, oh, I got this board with all these holes in it and I don't understand what they're for. And <laughs> The hole in the middle of the stand-up board is to insert your universal, then which allows you to connect your, your windsurfing board and uh, our windsurfing sail, which is a really cool thing. I mean, go out there, no wind. Do some light wind freestyle. <laughs> the, the other day I was uh, sup windsurfing on the Super 10 out at Kanaha with everyone. And uh, it was really cool, you know, it was light wind and just doing light wind freestyle with the sail on top of my stand-up board. Before the wind picked up, we were paddling on that same board. And wind picked up, I threw the starboard sail, just boom, right on top of the board and there you go. Now you're fully walking on water, flying around, you know, doing your thing. And I came in on the beach and somebody walked up to me and he's like, hey, is that, is that a stand-up board? Are you windsurfing on your stand-up board? And I'm like, yeah, this is, this is my stand-up board. I'm windsurfing on it, just like that. And he said, wow, that's really cool. That's really cool. I'm like, yeah, it is pretty cool, you know? So on, uh, on most of the starboard boards, there's uh, stand-up boards, there's a mass track, a little, there's three different holes on most of them. And you know, you could just take the, the universal and screw it into the board and right there, it turns it into a windsurfer. That's pretty much it. So you could go from stand-up paddling without the, the universal and the mass track, say the wind picks up a bit and you, you know, kind of getting blown around trying to paddle. You could just put your little mass track on and there you go, you have, you could throw your sail on just in, in one minute. So it's really cool and the starboard sails are actually a lot of fun because there's, there's only like one or two battens and really easy to rig. You could just unroll it, throw the mast in, tighten up the boom, plug it in and you're a go. So by windsurfing, your speed is generated by the wind and in paddle boarding, you have to paddle each stroke to make your speed. If you go downwind paddling, you can experience how the wind can help you going downwind. But it's really great to experience how you can go really far um, one direction and you come back and you can make all that speed by just holding a sail on your board and you transfer that energy into speed. It's a very free experience. The Rager windsurf sail has some uh, <clears throat> basic principles. First of all, you put the mast together, you put the mast through the mast sleeve. Then to attach the sail to the mast, you have a mast base. You make sure the tension on the downhaul, as we call it, to connect the sail to the base is really tight. That's, that's, your, that's your base, that's where you start from, and then the outhaul, the boom, what you hold on to. You can, you can work with the outhole, so if it's a lot of wind, you make the sail really flat, like, like a balloon. Um, when it's a, not so much wind and you want to catch more wind in the sail, you make the sail fuller. So it's good, you, you start with the mast, make sure that's all good, so you can play with the outhole. Um, it's a, it's a definitely one of the most frustrating sports I've tried, but once you get it down, it's the most rewarding. I mean, you, I, I don't know, it's just different. I mean, it's one of the own sports that you're using Mother Nature to get that kind of speed. And of course, once you get more advanced, jumping and surfing and stuff, and you're using the wind and the sail traps the wind basically and uh, allows you to go forward. and go back and forth in and out to the beach and uh, yeah, <laughs> just have fun. Steering with the sail 
uh, is fairly simple, but because your board will respond to the to this to the wind and start steering when you do anything you need to be aware when you do what and where you are with your board so when you make sure you are 90 degrees with your back against the wind so your board is 90 degrees towards the wind you hold the sail from that position on you can either steer the mast forward and your board will bear off the wind then you want to basically put your sail back up again if you want to change direction again so when you want to go upwind you put your you put your sail to the back and you open the sail always a little bit so it's not just putting it back but you can open your sail and you put it back and the board will stay up wind i've been teaching windsurfing for a while and what i would say is like the mast is the door and the door never hangs crooked in the wall so you try to have your mast upright and with that you open the, the door a little bit and you close it so you always want to make sure you work around the mast and in that when you have it a little bit open you either steer upwind or you put the mast forward and you steer downwind and it's kind of that way you can practice it and zigzag like a little snake in the water uphauling is a very important part of windsurfing when you learn you might drop the sail when things get heavy and wind gusts come and you're not prepared to that, it's also a smart thing to just drop the sail instead of hang on to it and pull a muscle. When you do uphaul, make sure you uphaul the sail, you really work with your legs, you have your straight back, so when you uphaul, you want to use the power from your legs and slowly by slowly when you come down, you, uh, when the sail comes up, <clears throat> you can grab hold on to the, to the boom. Now again, the same with the, the mast and the door explanation. When you uphaul, you want to make sure you uphaul the sail and when you grab a hold on to the boom, you can just stand there again with the board 90 degrees to the wind and your sail can be 90 degrees to the wind as well and nothing will happen and you can balance and figure it out. Get ready before you grab hold on to the boom and take the sail again. Turning around 100 in 80 degrees you can do it bo uh, two, uh, two different ways. You can turn into the wind and you can turn away from the wind. The smart thing is to learn to turn against the wind and that's so you can hold your ground. Uh, when you learn you might drop the sail and the wind might blow you downwind anyway. So if you can make up for that by turning into the wind and coming back, I would say go ahead and do that. The way to do it is you windsurf with your sail you move your sail back so the board steers into the wind then you want to keep pushing the sail by taking the uphaul or the boom and push it over the back of the board and that way is you have to walk in front of the mast let the board turn keep pushing the sail if you don't push nothing will happen and you most likely frustratingly you'll end up the way you came so you keep on pushing until the board changes you keep uh, turn uh, pushing the sail so you're again 180 degrees with the wind towards the other side. The fact that you have to walk around the mast, it seems a little complicated, so people prefer to do it the other way. And the other way is you windsurf, you can take the uphole and let the sail push to the, over the front of the sail. This way you don't have to walk around the mast, you can stand where you, where you normally stand. So it's a little easier but the danger is that you bear off wind and you end up walking your gear back. So it's a toss up and some people pretend, you know, some people prefer to learn it the easy way and figure out the harder part later. Personally, I just learned people how to turn into the wind just by standing when, when they start coming on the board. Take the up hole and, and, and push the sail over the back of the board and just learn how to turn a couple times. So once you're out there, the, the classic stories of I was a kilometer out the coast or 200 meters out the coast and I couldn't come back won't happen. And that's the essentials you need. So put it all together, you're standing on your board, up haul the sail, you start going. Now you're walking on water once you start going. And then you're looking around and you're like, damn, that guy next to me is going fast. And then you see a guy to your left doing a big jump. And then you see a guy throwing a backflip and you're like, I wanna do that. And really, I think everybody, when they first start windsurfing, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty stoked on it, but looking around makes them even more stoked because they see people doing just crazy things and they're like, dude, I wanna do that. I wanna fly through the air like that. 
And so once you start going, you know, your first step after actually windsurfing is probably jibing. You get your jibes and your tacks down, and then it's like water starting. Once you get your water starting down, you could jump on a smaller board and really get planing in the foot straps. And then from there, it's just like, you're at the top of the roller coaster and you're about to go down and scream your life, you know, scream for life, you know. From there, you're jumping, you're forward looping, you're doing back loops, and then it's just like, you're, you're progressing every day after that. It's really crazy.